Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to learn about quadratic equations. Our objective for today is that students should be able to solve different types of quadratic equations by taking square roots, factoring, and or completing the square. Before we learn the three methods for solving quadratic equations, let's go over the standard form of a quadratic function. The standard form of a quadratic function is ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, where a, b, and c are rational numbers and a is not zero. When you guys write this down, I want you to circle it, bold it, underline it, do whatever you need to do, because the standard form of a quadratic equation is very important to know. In this lesson, we will learn three different ways to solve quadratic equations. These ways are called taking square roots, factoring, and completing the square. There are two main reasons as to why we would use taking square roots as our method for solving quadratic equations. The first reason is if we are given a quadratic function that has only one x squared term and no x term, i.e. b is equal to zero. Or if the quadratic equation is written in such a way that a binomial term is squared. So for example, the equation I have here is x plus two squared minus six equals zero. Notice that the whole binomial term x plus two is squared. So if we were given an equation that looked like this, we would want to take square roots. So of all the methods we have, taking square roots has the least amount of steps. Though unfortunately, it will also probably come up the least amount of times. Step one is to analyze the problem. This will always be the first step to solving any quadratic function. Step two is to isolate x squared. And step three is to square root both sides of the equation so that we can solve for x. So for our example, let's take 2x squared plus 5 equals 23 and solve for x. So the first step to solving any quadratic equation is to analyze the problem. Analytical thinking nowadays is so important, so I feel that it's very necessary for us to analyze the problem and really break it down, because that will help you guys not only in this class, but in the workforce and everywhere you go. So let's take a look at 2x squared plus 5 equals 23. Notice that the highest exponent of this equation is 2, so it is quadratic. Also, there is no x value, so b is equal to 0. Therefore, because b equals 0 and the equation is a quadratic, the best way to solve for x would be to take square roots. Step 2 is to isolate x squared. We need to get x squared by itself. That's what isolate means. In this problem, x squared is being multiplied by 2, and 5 is being added to that. So to get x squared by itself, we will subtract 5 from both sides, and then we will divide both sides by 2. Once we do this, we will be left with x squared equals 9. OK, so now we're on our last step, step 3, which is to take square roots of both sides of the equation. So we're going to take the square root of both sides of the equation, and that would leave us with the square root of x squared, which is just x, because the square root of anything squared is just the term itself. So for example, the square root of 10 squared would be 10 because square root and squares cancel each other out, essentially. And then the square root of 9 is 3. So our final answer is x equals plus or minus 3, something that's very, very, very important when you do these type of problems is that whenever you physically write in a square root, you must write plus or minus in front of your answer. And this is because 3 times 3 is equal to 9, but also negative 3 times negative 3 is equal to 9. So we need to account for both options. If we have a quadratic polynomial where b does not equal 0, factoring should be our default method. However, if you are not able to factor easily, or it's impossible to factor, or you are stuck after about 5 minutes, simply move on to another method. The steps of factoring are as follows. Step 1, as always whenever you are solving a quadratic equation, is to analyze the problem. Step 2 
is to put the equation into standard form. Step three is to multiply a and c and then find factors of the product of a and c that add up to b. Step four is to write b as a sum of the factors from step three. Step five is to group the first two terms with each other and the last two terms with each other in order to simplify both terms separately. Step six is to obtain two binomials from the groups and set each binomial equal to zero in order to solve. Right now, this might seem like a lot of steps and it might seem a little overwhelming at first, but we will go over all steps in detail, so don't worry. So for our example, let's take x squared minus 4x equals 32 and solve for x. The first step to factoring is to analyze the problem. So let's take a look at x squared minus 4x equals 32. Notice that the highest exponent of this equation is 2, so therefore it is quadratic. Also, there's a coefficient in front of the x value, so b is a number. Therefore, because b is a number and the equation is a quadratic polynomial, we should try to solve for x using factoring. Step two is to put the equation into standard form. The equation is not yet in standard form because it is not equal to zero. So right now we have x squared minus 4x equals 32. In order to make this equal to zero, we're going to subtract 32 from both sides, leaving us with x squared minus 4x minus 32 equals zero. And now that the equation is in standard form, let's define a, b, and c. a equals 1 b equals negative 4, and c equals negative 32. In step 2, we determined that a equals 1, b equals negative 4, and c equals negative 32. For step 3, we will multiply a and c. So 1 times negative 32 equals negative 32. So now that we know the product of a and c is negative 32, we need to find factors of negative 32. The factors of negative 32 are 1 and 32, 2 and 16, and 4 and 8. Notice that because AC is negative, one factor will be negative and the other will be positive. So continuing with step 3, we need to find factors of negative 32 that add up to B, which in this case was negative 4. We do this by guessing and checking. So as you can see on the PowerPoint slide, I did some guessing and checking, and we eventually were able to determine that 4 and negative 8 were the factors we needed, because 4 times negative 8 equals negative 32, and 4 plus negative 8 is equal to negative 4. So because of this, the factors of AC that add up to B are 4 and negative 8. Step four of factoring is to write b as a sum of the factors from step three. The factors we determined from step three that added up to negative four were negative eight and four. Therefore, we will replace negative four x with negative eight x plus four x. So our new equation is x squared minus eight x plus four x minus 32 equals zero. Step five is to group the first two terms with each other and the last two terms with each other and simplify both terms separately. So right now, our equation looks like x squared minus 8x plus 4x minus 32 equals zero. So we will group the first two terms with each other and the last two terms with each other, creating two groups, the first group being x squared minus 8x and the second group being 4x minus 32. So in our first group, we're going to simplify it by factoring out an x. Notice that we have our first term as x squared and our second term as negative 8x. Therefore, the greatest common factor between these terms is x. So we're going to rewrite this as x squared minus 8x equals x parentheses x minus 8. Now we're going to simplify the second group. The second group will be simplified by factoring out a 4, because 4 is the greatest common factor between 4x and negative 32. Therefore, 4x minus 32 will equal 
4 parentheses x minus 8. Notice how both of these groups have the same thing in parentheses, x minus 8. Whenever you factor, both groups will always have the same binomial in parentheses, which in this case was x minus 8, when you simplify them. If this does not happen, like if you get two different binomials, you need to check your work because something went wrong. Now that we simplified each group in the previous slide, we will replace the first group and the second group with the simplified versions to get x parentheses x minus 8 plus 4 parentheses x minus 8 equals 0. The sixth and final step to factoring is to obtain two binomials from the groups and set each binomial equal to 0 to solve. The way we obtain binomials from this group is consistent with every factoring problem. It is done as follows. The first binomial will always be what's in parentheses, so in this case, x minus 8. And the second binomial is going to be everything that's out of parentheses, so that's x and positive 4. So our new equation looks like x minus 8 times x plus 4 equals 0. Finally, we will take both binomials and set them equal to 0 in order to solve for x. When we take our first binomial, x minus 8, and set it equal to 0, we should get that x equals 8. And our second binomial, x plus 4, when we set it equal to 0, will give us that x equals negative 4. Therefore, we get two answers, x equals 8 and x equals negative 4. The final method we will be going over today is completing the square. We use this method if a equals 1 and b is an even number. You can use this method if b is odd if you prefer using completing the square, but you will have to work with fractions, and let's face it, no one wants to work with fractions. You can also use completing the square if you get a quadratic that's impossible to factor or you are struggling to factor. There are five steps to completing the square. Step one is to analyze the problem. Step two is to move the constant term c to the right of the equation. Step three is to take b over two squared and add it to both sides of the equation. This part is why it's called completing the square, because we complete the square by squaring b over two. Step four is to factor the left side of the equation. And the final step is to square root both sides of the equation and isolate x. For our example, let's solve x squared plus 4x plus 1 equals 0 for x. So let's take a look at x squared plus 4x plus 1. The highest exponent in this equation is 2, so we know that it's quadratic. There's a coefficient in front of the x value, and it is an even number, so b is even. In this problem, because it's already written in standard form, we can tell that a equals 1, b equals 4, and c equals 1. If we multiply a and c together, we get 1. So now we would need factors of 1 that add up to 4. Unfortunately, the only factors of 1 are 1 and 1, and 1 plus 1 is 2. So therefore, this equation would not be factorable. So because b is even, a is 1, and the quadratic polynomial is not factorable, we will use completing the square. So the next step for completing the square is to move the constant term c to the right side of the equation. This step is sometimes not necessary, depending on how the equation is given to you, but because the one given to us was in standard form, we need to do it. So we have x squared plus 4x plus 1 equals 0, and we need to move the constant term to the right side. Remember that the constant term is a term without a variable next to it, which in this case is positive 1. So in order to move positive 1 to the right side of the equation, we need to subtract 1 from both sides. This leaves us now with x squared plus 4x equals negative 1. Our next step is to take b divided by 2 and square it, and then add it to both sides of the equation. Right now, we have x squared plus 4x 
equals negative 1. Remember in step 1 that we said b was equal to 4. So therefore, we're going to replace b with 4, divide it by 2, and square it. 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 2 squared is equal to 4. So we will add 4 to both sides of the equation, remembering to combine like terms. This leaves us with x squared plus 4x plus 4 equals 3. Step 4 for completing the square is to factor the left side of the equation. The equation we have right now is x squared plus 4x plus 4 equals 3. When completing the square, the left side of the equation will always, 100% of the time, factor into x plus b over 2 squared. We can factor it the long way. However, you'll always get x plus b over 2 squared. So to save time, we're just going to replace the left side of the equation with x plus b over 2 squared. From step 2, we know that b over 2 is equal to 2. So our new equation is x plus 2 squared, the whole thing squared, equals 3. The final step to completing the square is to square root both sides of the equation and isolate x. So looking at our work, you can see that we did the square root of both sides, which left with us x plus 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 3. Don't forget that when you do the square root yourself, you have to add plus or minus in front of the square root answer. Then we subtracted 2 from both sides, which left us for the final answer of x equals negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 3. So this concludes our class. I hope you guys have a great day, and thank you for listening.